Now, as lockdown takes its toll, it seems that many of us have been comfort eating to get through boredom. Researchers found that half of Brits admit that they've put weight on, with 78% admitting to eating more during lockdown. Well, uh, here with help, we hope, is Dr. Sarah Jarvis. Uh, morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, my, my other half, he finishes his dinner... So he's had, you know, last night we had a homemade mazaka with a salad. And then mm -hmm. we had, um, sorry, that's my phone. Turn it off again. <laughs> that's the second time that's <laughs> happened to me. Um, and Glad then it I had, me. it wasn't you. No, then I had a fresh fruit salad with a, yeah. a yogurt, um, a fruit yogurt with a, on the top of it. And within about 20 minutes, he'd gone back into the kitchen mm. and he helped himself to a bowl of cereal. Oh, now I said yeah. you can't be hungry, but what is it? Why? What's driving him? Well, we know that boredom is a major, major driver. Interestingly, according to this new research from Jane Plan, the diet delivery expert, over two thirds of Brits have overeaten because of boredom, mm -hmm. and half of Brits have said they gained weight during lockdown. So, unfortunately, your other half is by no means in bad company. If we then add in, of course, stress and a lack of routine, then suddenly all our normal habits are out the window. And of course, what's been happening perhaps in his case is that normally, you know, you get up, perhaps you have breakfast, then you go off to work, you work through till lunchtime, and then you have lunch. After lunch, you work through for the afternoon. Some people might have a snack. Unfortunately, these days, of course, what I used to call a sweet when I was a child, which was my once weekly chocolate bar, has become a standard routine for the middle of the afternoon. But that's, we'll, we'll come on to that later. And then you come home and you sit down for supper. So you're in much, much, much more of a routine. When you're not in a routine, we know that people are more likely to sleep more and then more likely to eat more. And of course, if you're feeling stressed or anxious, that's also another major driver. Yeah, because we think it's making us feel good. But it doesn't last long, does it? Unfortunately, it doesn't. And what's, the other thing that's interesting is that, of course, there is a tendency, especially if you're feeling stressed or anxious or bored, to go for the ultra-processed foods, the ones which kind of give you a sugar rush very yeah. quickly and that maybe gives you a little bit more energy briefly. The problem with those is what goes up must come down and what goes up quickly comes down quickly. So you can get a slump in a very short space of time and end up feeling hungry. So we know that, for instance, higher protein foods are more likely to help you to keep full for longer. Your other half may be confusing boredom or you know, wanting something with feeling hungry. So, for instance, having a glass of water may well be enough to, to get rid of that, to make his tummy feel a little bit fuller again. There are all sorts of ways that we can work around this. But I think there are a few key messages. The first is routine. The second is these ultra-processed foods. So there we're talking about carbohydrates mostly, the ones that give you a very quick sugar rush or a very quick high because they're quickly absorbed into your system. They make your blood sugar go up. Your body doesn't have to work to push your blood sugar up because they, put, they do it for you and they come down. And those ultra-processed foods, whether they're the ultra-processed starchy carbs or the ultra-processed sugary carbs are really lethal. They may well yeah. drive more weight gain than just simple calories in another sense. And the third one is portion size. We've mm. got to have the habit of knowing what a normal portion is. Yes. Yeah, we have huge plates. Huge mm -hmm. plates now. <laughs> and I, I, I do, you know, wonder if there's been an element of sticking our heads in the sand during this lockdown period because we haven't had to put on uh, something to make us feel good. And lots of us are, are slopping around in, you know, tracksuit bottoms and baggy T-shirts and not seeing folk. And it yeah. might come as a bit of a shock when you go to put on that smart pair of trousers. I think that's absolutely right because, of course, pyjamas do tend to have elasticated <laughs> bottoms and even if we're having to put something on our top half, we've very often not got something wet that we'd wear outside on our bottom half. So I think you're absolutely right. But the good news, there is good news. Um, we are coming down and we're coming down in summer at a time when as long as we continue to socially distance, she says very importantly, yeah. as long as we continue to socially distance, we can get outside much more. We can do more exercise. You can now you know, have a whole range of outdoor exercises, not just walking or cycling. You could go to that outdoor gym. You could go to, to, the, um, to the golf course or to the tennis courts, all sorts of things that you can do. So firstly, I think we're going to get into more of a routine and it's really important that the nutritional routine is part of the rest of our, our normal routine. Secondly, because it's summer, I think it's easier to access healthier foods. A lot of people, a lot of my patients certainly say, oh, well, it's 
too expensive for me to eat healthily. No, it really, really isn't. Those you know, strawberries are gorgeous at the moment, aren't they? They are fabulous at the yeah. moment. Lots of fruit and vegetables. Yeah. Tomatoes are out in force, cucumbers. And we're very lucky we've only got a small garden, but my husband has worked wonders with it. And we're having, you know, spinach, uh, spinach, carrots, and catch carrots a little bit early, but spinach, celery, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, radish, lettuce, all those things on the table every single day. We've just started getting green beans and mulch chew through. There are all sorts of things, and they're the gifts that keep on giving. But actually, if you're buying in the shops, if you find that the fresh veg is still expensive, and some of it really isn't that, so tomatoes particularly very cheap, then, you know, go for tin veg or frozen veg, because actually in nutritional value, that's just as good. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Dr. Sarah Jarvis, thank you so much for joining us this morning. So is that you, I wonder? Have you piled on the pounds during lockdown? You're going to have a real determined effort to shed them now. I understood loneliness.